Hi everyone, uh, Anissa Coy here. I know that um, most of you probably have never met me or seen me before. I'm actually the woman that's usually behind the camera when Mr. Kevin's Micro Homestead is um, filming and doing videos for you guys. But I'm actually uh, decided to do this video myself, so I apologize. I hope I'm not like cutting the top of my head off or I don't have an ear on the right side or something because I can't see the screen when I'm holding the camera myself. But I wanted to give you guys a peek into my world, the other side of the camera, um, and, and just show you a little bit, um, give you an idea of what it's like to live with a micro house enthusiast with severe ADD. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back behind the camera where I'm used to being, and I'm going to just show you a little bit of Kevin's um, mad scientist laboratory that he's got going on here. As you can tell, we have lots of spare things laying around and bucket vacuums and water tanks and and all kinds of gear boxes and um, hoses and nuts and bolts and wood shims and pieces of copper pipe. I have no idea what that's any of this stuff is for. Um, bicycle helmet. I don't know. Maybe he's gonna like try to put some sort of an air cooling system on it for when he's riding his bike. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, he definitely <laughs> has a lot of things in his repertoire. There's even a bow and arrow up here. Look at that. That's pretty funny because he doesn't even hunt. Um, but he has all kinds of things on his um, shelves here that he can use to create uh, whatever next crazy idea that he comes up with for a new motor or a low impact earth friendly no fuel needed uh, cook stove or just any any kind of craziness so I just wanted to kind of show you that hopefully he won't be mad at me <laughs> when he sees this video because what are you doing <laughs> Um, I, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> I, uh, just thought I would, uh, I'd give him a peek in, uh, into my world with you in it. Oh, it's your world. <laughs> mm -hmm. No wonder I'm lost. Hold on. <laughs> Kevin Coy here. Apparently there's some shenanigans going on in this laboratory. Evil scheme hatchery. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what's been going on, but let's talk. I got, uh, I got some projects going, as you probably heard. So <laughs> Two or three. Look, let's take a look around here and see what the heck's going on in the mind of an evil genius. <coughs> I'm a genius in my own mind. So I'm, I'm constantly in the middle of something, or several somethings. This is a uh, little piece that I was putting together that I... My, my problem is the internet. It's like crack to a person with ADD, that's me. I can get on there and, and like dive down the rabbit hole and disappear for hours, but when I come up for air, I usually come up with some idea that I want to go fiddle around with. So what this is is a, is a rocket stove that I built, and it's you can see it's, it's kind of lightweight, even though it's made out of concrete, but it's mostly made out of peat moss. Peat moss with a little bit of concrete mixed in, and I built it inside of a bucket and you put the wood in this way and it has natural draft coming up and this is something I'm working with with another friend of mine you've probably seen in one of my videos by the name of Michael Ewens he goes to Guatemala and helps uh, the Highland uh, uh, Guatemalans that are living in poverty uh, trying to have a better life and this they cook on open wood fires inside their buildings and so I was Try to come up with a way that they could easily cook a portable device that they could set outside and cook on so they weren't going to uh, have to inhale smoke all the time, which they do. And so we're playing around with this, uh, just trying to come up with 
materials and easy to use components without a lot of tools and power and things that they would have to have in order to uh, put these things together and produce them while they're with, with the minimal amount of uh, availability of things that they have up there. So one of my projects, so let's walk by here and as you'll notice um, I have some solar panels over here. These are a portable set of panels that I've been playing around with. And they're hooked up to a battery that's being charged inside, and there's a light laying on the floor. Um, I don't know, but I don't think it's hooked up, but that's a 12 volt light. And it's hooked up to a 400 watt inverter, and you can plug in electrical outlet type things on that. Um, lots of spare parts and doodads and, you know, bits and pieces of, of whatever and what have you that I always draw from. It's my uh, treasure stash. And then if you walk around the corner real quick, <laughs> I'll show you a few more spare parts for projects. My portable um, milling device, also known as a chainsaw. Uh, another battery, uh, gas lamp, gas powered heater, gas powered stove, oil lamp, gas powered hot water de uh, device that's portable with a shower attachment. There's a, a laundry uh, washing machine sitting right here, this white thing. So just a lot of, uh, you know, a couple of different sizes of propane tanks and I've got several other sizes, one that's this big and one that's that big, just depending on what it is. I'm playing with some concrete for the rocket stove project that I'm messing around with. Um, this box right here is my, one of my uh, survivor pod bug out devices that I'm hatching putting together and it's going to have all kinds of cool infrastructure so stay tuned on that. Just a little bit of everything that makes it fun. It's like Sanford and Son meets tiny houses if that works as an analogy. <laughs> so anyway let's go look at today's project which is a little plumbing hack that I'm putting together. So I got all these spare bits and pieces that I've been Calcul or uh, not calculating, I don't calculate anything, I just do it. Um, collecting is what I was meaning to say. So I got this old uh, kit, uh, bathroom sink out of a yard sale. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. And uh, if you ever get a hold of one of these, you should, they're handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting together a, uh, uh, a little plumbing hack here that's, that's a, putting a sink in, in a tiny house uh, or, or small building or dwelling or you know if it's on a trailer it's on the ground it's in a tree it's in, a, in the dirt I don't care what you do with it but I want to show you how to easily put together and have indoor plumbing of a sort that will allow you to you know wash your hands do whatever have some water inside to get a drink so what I'm doing is I'm uh, again, this is all off-the-shelf, do-it-yourself type stuff. It's not anything that you have to go, A, spend a lot of money on, B, have a, a lot of knowledge, or, or have to go, you know, buy it from some, you know, strange place that you're not aware of. So this is stuff I get at local hardware stores, Walmarts, big box stores, whatever. I think I paid $10 for this little faucet. I'm going to stick it in here run the nuts down on it I get it started and show you what I'm going to do this is just a uh, easy way to have, you know if you're if you're in a campground you put this in your homemade uh, you know camping pod dwelling tiny house whatever you can put it in the tree house I don't care what you do with it um, so you'll have a way to have fresh water coming in as well as uh, wastewater going out it'll be a gray water not a black water so difference being no toilet material connected to this system so what this is is a riser on the floor <laughs> it's just a how long is this? 20 inch riser. It's a flexible riser that you would hook up to a sink, a toilet, a, a faucet in the kitchen or the bathroom or whatever. This is what they use. And I just picked one up that would match the, uh, the sink here. 
the faucet and all you need to do is just screw it on so if you're standing in front of a sink you got hot and cold I'm gonna hook it up to cold because we're only gonna have cold water going in at this point we may hook up hot water later in another video down so I can do it. So all I'm going to do here is just stick this straight onto this cold water side and you can tighten that up. I'm just going to show you. And then this is a this is a little faucet you can pick up again at the hardware. It's a, a half inch brass faucet. Now am I moving too fast? <laughs> anyway hook up a garden hose on this end hook the other end of this on this end. And I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's spring, my allergy season. So now this this part of it's gonna wind up on the outside of the building and sticking in through here to hook to this, and then I'm gonna hook a garden hose on here, and I'll show you how we do that when we get it out to the building. But I just wanted to kind of let you see what's going on. So now we got the tailpiece coming off the bottom of the sink for the drain. Let me show you what we're gonna do there. I bought this. Uh, p-trap and the nice thing about this p-trap is it's very forgiving it, it moves and and this expands you can go this way and go that way so you don't really have to be perfect about lining things up so all you're gonna do is they have what they call a compression nut right here and uh, I'm just gonna slide this ring down this compression ring you can see it's got a taper to it the tapered end goes down onto the tailpiece and it's pretty snug which is what it's supposed to be okay then I'm gonna screw these two pieces you know what I misspoke I'm gonna go the other way here and the tapers gonna go the other direction I'm upside down so I'm getting lost there we go you don't normally put things together upside down screw this on here and you can pretty much hand tighten this. This is not under pressure. This is the wastewater, so it's just flowing out. There's not a high pressure line like you have on this end with the water coming in. So same thing here. It's got another one of those nuts just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, this allows me a lot of freedom. I can cut a hole in the wall, and I'm going to basically, let me grab another piece here, wind up, uh, depending on how I mount this sink, into the into the building and I'll, I'll show you that half here shortly um, I may need a little bit extra pipe so I got a little piece of inch and a half uh, ABS waste pipe and again same deal if I needed to add some pipe to get out of the building I put these two pieces on and put that on and then you can literally just like a bunch of tinker toys screw or push that in it's just a, a friction fit now you can glue these I'm not gonna there's no pressure here these are pretty snug I'm in an outbuilding that I'm not gonna worry about if water drips um, if you are and you want to be more permanent about it you can glue this in this is just a compression 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 that's compression so this is all just gonna stay together by tightening them up real good now you can cut this to whatever length you need to go if you need to do something where you want to drop it down I got these 90s here so you cut this to wherever you want to go put the 90 on go down go out again and out you know so we're going to cut a hole in the back of the wall of the building so i can let this go out so just wanted to let you see how this all kind of comes together in here in the mad uh, scientist department so what i'm going to do next is decide how it is i want to mount this sink into some sort of a frame to support it and then we'll figure out from there where I'm going to go to get the uh, waste pipe to go out the wall and where I'm going to poke a hole to let the water come in. And then I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you here. We're going to break and then I'll, I'll get that set up and we'll film that next. So we'll see you in a little bit.